I think one of the advantages of studying the effects of creatine on physical performance is we have really good objective measurements that you can demonstrate in a short period of time. You could do a 12-week study, and in just 12 weeks, you could objectively, unambiguously determine if there was hypertrophy and if there was an increase in performance. Right. How do we do that on the cognitive side? Right. What are the data that you've been looking at that have given you uh, an increasing level of confidence? Okay. Well, first, let's talk about dose because that's important. And I think that that was where initially when researchers were looking into like the effects of creatine on the brain, the five grams a day didn't seem to be doing anything in terms of like getting creatine into the brain. And so the question so creatine is crossing the blood brain barrier that's established? It it is. Okay. However, the muscles are greedy as hell. Ah, those <laughs> lovely greedy muscles. Yeah, the greedy muscles. And so there when you're taking in up to about five grams of of creatine, they're they're consuming it. They're they're taking their share. Especially if you're training. It's, if you're training, it's like, yeah, exactly. Um, but even if you're not training, it's it's still going to muscle. But yes, especially if you're training. Does that mean that you're going to get mixed results if you look at the cognition literature because you're going to have some studies that were underdosed? And if, if you have a study that was done at five and it shows no effect, you're going to come to the wrong conclusion potentially. Bingo. Just like with any yep. supplement and or drug, right? Dose, dose matters. Um, so yes, that is, that is the case. But also it's important to point out, just like with muscle, you have to be stressing your muscle for creatine to work, right? You're, you're basically putting in the work and you're able to put in more work, right? Mm. And that's why you can increase muscle mass and you can increase strength. With the brain, it works in the background of stress. And what I mean by stress is sleep deprivation, psychological stress, like you have an exam, marital, I mean, wh whatever psychological stress, emotional stress, sleep deprivation is a big one, neurodegenerative disease or anything that's compromising brain function, right? That's where creatine really shines in terms of cognitive function, and we'll get into measurements. But I think that's important to point out, and you might, this is my argument. I feel like I'm constantly under stress. I think most people are constantly under stress. First of all- Anybody listening, if you're not under stress, I'd like to hear from you. I wanna know what you're doing. Same, same. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I mean, like even just like diving into the, the scientific literature, like what we do every day, learning, that is the stress, right? That's very, it's, the brain consumes a lot of energy as well, right? It's 20% it's, it's, of our total caloric exactly. intake goes to an organ that weighs less than 2% of your body weight. It is the most insane statistic of the human body. Totally, which is why it makes sense that giving your brain extra creatine, which can recycle that energy quicker, would help, particularly in the background of when you're using more of that energy, right? Like if energy is being triaged to whatever stress and the hormones and the whatever, whatever's going on, um, fill in the blank. Um, and so the studies that typically are looking at the effects of creatine on cognitive function are looking at like processing speed. They're looking at a battery of tests that are, you know, typical of any, you know, fill in the blank supplement or treatment that is either are going to improve cognitive function, memory being another one, right? Um, processing speed's a big one, too, I would say, that, that creatine's been shown to improve. But again, really, it's in the background of stress, whether that's stress being aging, so older adults. So aging is kind of a stress, right, brain aging. So older adults seem to benefit from taking exogenous creatine or supplemental creatine. Dom D'Agostino's name written all over it, it right? Act, that's a really good point. It totally does. We, we got to talk Dom into doing this. It's, I'm, so there was like a pilot study that came out, and I don't, these are researchers that I don't know necessarily, mm -hmm. and some of them are pretty junior, but there, there was one that came out with people with Alzheimer's disease, and they were given 20 grams of creatine, and it improved cognitive function in these, in these patients with Alzheimer's disease. I think there was also placebo control as well, and then they took those same patients and then had them exercise and, imp and improved strength and improved, you know, lean body mass. See, I'm, I'm just going to be skeptical yes. that, that, that I, I still think that the name of the game is prevention, right? Like where I'm most interested. And of course, that's the hardest thing to study. But, it, you know, when we think about the energy crisis that is happening in a brain with Alzheimer's disease, and while there are, I think, 
you and I would agree there are probably many paths towards AD, right? There are inflammatory paths, there are uh, lipid-mediated and vascular paths, and then there are, there, are, there are sort of these more metabolic paths. But when you take that individual who is most susceptible to the metabolic path towards dementia, and 10 years earlier or 20 years earlier, you're giving them a substrate that is augmenting ATP creation. Yeah, I get it. That's the hardest thing to study. That's also the single most important question in my mind. Totally. I mean, prevention is the name of the game for sure, 100%. Um, unfortunately, there's a lot of people's parents out there that have it right yeah. now because they missed the boat on prevention, right? Um, but, and so, and, and those people are, you know, obviously like, their kids are willing to do anything to help them. It's, it's terrible, right? But I mean, I think the reality here and the point I wanna make is I think that creatine for the brain is the most interesting aspect of this area of research right now, that I, at least for me. Um, I certainly think that th there, it, there's really no downside to doing 10 grams a day. Now in some cases, sleep deprivation, like I just got back from China about five days ago. I've been like doing 20 grams a day, 15 to 20. And are you having any, I, I was, I remember as a kid, I never had the GI side effects with even 30 a day, but is, is for some people is, is 10 to 20? In one, in one dose, it would probably affect a lot of people's GI. I do five gram doses. And you'll just put the five grams into water and just. I put the five grams into water or like tea, and then I just take it like that. And, you know, I yep. do it mostly before noon. So I, I like to take it in the morning because. For, I, you know, like I said, I don't know if this is placebo, but I don't get sleepy in the afternoon anymore. If I miss, if I, if I only get five grams, I get the sleepiness. Now, again, it could be complete, like, bias. And who cares? If it's not, like... If the placebo's working for you, it's take working, it. Exactly. Because yeah. it's, cause it's, it's physiologic, right? I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a biological mechanism that's working for me. And if you listen to this episode and it works for you, that's great because there's really no downside. And in fact, I think we're going to get more and more evidence out there that it's going to be beneficial and 10 grams is going to be the new, the new baseline. five grams. Yeah, it's yeah. going to be the new baseline. If we have a little bit more time, I want to talk something about a topic that is near and dear to both of our hearts, which is temperature. Temperature.